Andy Murray has admitted that my attitude was poor, after he bowed out of the European Open in Antwerp with a straight sets defeat to Diego Schwartzman. Murray, back at the scene of his last singles title in 2019, was unable to make the most of an early lead as Schwartzman won 6-4, 7-6-6, in 2 hours and 13 minutes. The Argentinian had the luxury of a first round bye on Tuesday while Murray fought his way into the last 16 with an epic victory over Francis Defoe which lasted almost four hours. I didn't make as many good decisions as I would have liked in the second set dealing with adversity, Murray said. Mentally I was poor and my attitude was poor on the court. Murray struck the first blow against Schwartzman to break for a 3-1 lead and the Scots serve was not troubled until the Argentinian fought back in the seventh game. Murray saved a second break point with an ace, but it was third time lucky for Schwartzman who broke, leveled and then surged ahead. Schwartzman saw out the first set by winning a fifth consecutive game. Murray held serve at the start of the next set by saving two break points but Schwartzman's did break for a 3-2 lead, before Murray showed his resilience once again to level at 4-4. Both players then led in a thrilling tie break which saw no less than five break points but Schwartzman clinched victory with his second match point. Continuing his comeback less than a year after hip resurfacing surgery, Murray now plans to play at the Erster Bank Open in Vienna next week and November's Stockholm Open. Murray could also play at the Paris Masters in between, possibly as a wild card or entering the qualifying stages. There will be a decision on the final Paris wild card on Monday, but I might even play the qualies there, Murray said. Sport is a results business. Play well or poorly doesn't really matter if you lose matches. You need to be winning. That's what I want in the last few tournaments. They are really strong tournaments and there are no guarantees the results will come, but I want to win more matches. Emma Raducanu has meanwhile announced she will play on the WTA Tour in Austria next month. The U.S. Open champion, who is down to appear in next week's Transylvanian Open, said in a video posted on Twitter, I'm very excited to be coming to the Upper Austria Ladies Linz tournament this November. Hope to see you there. The Upper Austria Ladies Linz event will be played from the 6th to the 12th of November. The 18-year-old British star pulled out of this week's VTB Kremlin Cup in Moscow. Raducanu has played only one match since she shot to international stardom with her victory at Flushing Meadows last month, suffering a second-round defeat to Alexandra Sasnovich at the BNP Paribas Open. After losing 6-2, 6-4 to Sasnovich at Indian Wells, which came 27 days after her U.S. Open triumph, Raducanu said she needed to cut herself some slack, as she comes to terms with her new life as a Grand Slam champion. As you're joining us from Vietnam, we have a small favor to ask. Tens of millions have placed their trust in The Guardian's high-impact journalism since we started publishing 200 years ago, turning to us in moments of crisis, uncertainty, solidarity and hope. More than 1.5 million readers, from 180 countries, have recently taken the step to support us financially, keeping us open to all, and fiercely independent. With no shareholders or billionaire owner, we can set our own agenda and provide trustworthy journalism that's free from commercial and political influence, offering a counterweight to the spread of misinformation. When it's never mattered more, we can investigate and challenge without fear or favor.
Unlike many others, Guardian journalism is available for everyone to read, regardless of what they can afford to pay. We do this because we believe in information equality. Greater numbers of people can keep track of global events, understand their impact on people and communities, and become inspired to take meaningful action. We aim to offer readers a comprehensive, international perspective on critical events shaping our world, from the Black Lives Matter movement, to the new American administration, Brexit, and the world's slow emergence from a global pandemic. We are committed to upholding our reputation for urgent, powerful reporting on the climate emergency, and made the decision to reject advertising from fossil fuel companies, divest from the oil and gas industries, and set a course to achieve net zero emissions by 2030. If there were ever a time to join us, it is now. Every contribution, however big or small, powers our journalism and sustains our future. Support The Guardian from as little as $1 it only takes a minute. If you can, please consider supporting us with a regular amount each month. Thank you.